In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Flux Photoshop action. So the first thing you want to do is open up a photo to work with. So a few things you've got to check before running the action. So just go to the image menu, go into mode, make sure your photo is in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel selected. Uh, you want to make sure you're working with a uh, fairly big size image so you can see I'm, uh, the resolution of the photo I'm using here. I would avoid using photos under a thousand pixels uh, high or wide because I noticed when testing the action that it can run into errors uh, if the photo wasn't big enough so uh, just make sure of that. Uh, another thing you want to check is that when you open up your photo uh, the, your layer needs to be set as a background so if you open it up and it's called something else and it doesn't have that lock symbol just select it, go to the layer menu, go to new background from layer and it will set it as a background layer. And lastly, just quickly check if you go into the, uh, your layer panel and select this top right hand corner icon, go to panel options, just check that add copy to copy layers and groups is selected. Alright, so now we're going to load up our actions panel, go to the window, actions, and select this top right hand corner icon, go to load actions. Select Flux at ATM file. Okay, so there it is. Now, there's only one thing we need to do to get this action working. We need to create a new layer called Brush. Hit B on the keyboard, grab yourself a brush. Uh, select uh, the hard brush, and you can use any color. Just something that stands out so you can see where you're brushing on your photo. Now, what you want to do, you want to, uh, where you brush onto your photo is the areas that are going to break up and you're going to shoot into a direction so I want to break up his arm here around here so I want this action, I want the pieces to shoot down so just keep that in mind, the direction uh, that you want the pieces to shoot off into when you're brushing Okay, so that's all you really need to do. Now you just need to select what direction you want the pieces to go off into and click play on the action. So the action takes about a minute to run. So just click play and then come back to Photoshop in a minute's time and see what you got. So I'll just click play and fast forward the video to get to the result. Okay, so the action's finished and here is our result. So let's go ahead into the layer panel and just talk about what we have to work with here. So we have this one master folder called Flux, which has all the effects in it. Uh, okay, And we have this top layer brush, which was the initial area that we brushed. So if you wanted to start the action again, you could just delete the folder. You could brush um, into different areas and just hit the, uh, run the action again. Okay, So inside the folder, we have all these layers here. Okay, so these are all the pieces. Uh, that are broken up onto separate layers which you can move around, duplicate, do what you want. But the top three ones here are some simple adjustment layers. So this top one, add saturation. What I like to do here is look at our um, photo and adjust the saturation or uh, reduce the saturation of some of the colors. So in this case, I want to boost the saturations of the green. So I'll select green and I'll turn that up. And I want to turn, say, the blues down. So I'll select blue, we'll move the saturation from there, I'll move the lightness as well. Okay, so you can just experiment with this uh, adjustment layer. Add contrast, you can adjust the opacity of this one here if you want to uh, add more contrast to your design. Just like that. The layer below, add sharpening. If I turn this one on and off, you can see that it just enhances the details a little. So this is more of a finishing touch um, uh, adjustment layer. So if you're moving all these pieces around, I would recommend not using this and then flattening your image after you finish the design and sharpening it from there. So I'll show that a bit later on. So I'll leave that on for the moment. So these top four layers are our uh, blurry pieces. So I'll move these around. You can see those. So what you can do with these, you can say, 
uh, you can just duplicate these and you can you know, scale these up if you want you can blur them more so I can go go ahead and blur so something like that up there okay so all these blue layers are our simple uh, parts layers so these are the little bits and pieces that shoot off from where we brush where we brush onto our photo so I'll move this one around you can see the pieces there so you can always just turn these off if you want to um, reduce the amount or you can say select a group and hold them down alt on a PC here I can just duplicate them all and move them down uh, you can move them around so they don't get that repetitive look uh, so a lot of flexibility there this layer here part 5 will drop to shadow, if I move this to the top right hand corner you can see I've added a little drop shadow to this so it just helps um, so for example look around his knee here you can see the shadow there uh, so if you want you can turn that off uh, by just selecting clicking on the eye and the drop shadow like that ok moving down the line here uh, the green ones are the thin lines so if I move these around you can see you can see those there so again you can um, just duplicate those, rotate them, scale them um, and just remember I've, I've colour coded um, these layers so the thin lines are all grouped together uh, so going down we have these group of yellow layers now these are the ones that you can see that are glowing so if I move these around you can see that and the way these work is that they're in groups of two so part with glow one part with glow one boost light uh, you notice if I move them around uh, it actually, it's actually moving both these layers around because they're linked okay so if I want to create um, some more glows if I hold down an alt and drag this out duplicate that layer um, you'll notice that it hasn't um, created another one because they're all still linked so if you create a duplicate, make sure on that duplicate just to right click and go unlink layers and then you can move that around and you can see uh, you've got a copy now alright um, that's just the same with these other ones now if you want to remove the glows and just have them as normal pieces shift select all those layers right click and go clear layer style ok so now you've just got more broken up pieces I'll leave the glow on for this. This bottom one here, um, this layer, if I just move this out to the side, actually what I'll do, I'll move this out of the main folder and I'll turn the main folder off. So this bottom layer in purple is the one that's always going to break off the biggest pieces. So if I move that out of the way, you can see that there. And it's also got a drop shadow. So just keep in mind that this is a good one to experiment with. Uh, when you finish the action, move it around, duplicate it, because um, you can get some really cool results just from this one, moving this one layer around, um, and check the drop shadow on and off. You can also double click on the drop shadow, uh, you can increase the, the opacity of it and the size. Okay. Alright, so let's put this back inside here. and that's really all there is to it now if you want to say remove um, erase some and say I don't want all these pieces on his chest so if I go I select the flux folder there's a layer mask here so just hit B on the keyboard grab yourself a black brush uh, probably better to use a soft one and what you can do you can just start brushing away those pieces but what you can see is that you can see the different coloration from where I've brushed um, on his chest so to avoid that it's because we've got our adjustment layers in the main folder so if you just drag these outside of the folder you'll retain the um, the colors that the adjustment layers have given us okay so another thing to keep in mind is that um, if I brush out say all this section down here 
You can see all these faint details are still there. That's from the um, add sharpening layer. So you're probably best to, um, if you make a lot of adjustments after the action's finished, just to turn this one off. All right. And what we'll do now is just uh, flatten the image. Or another way to sharpen uh, your photo is if I hold down Control Shift Alt and E, it'll merge our entire design into a single layer. Uh, okay, so what you can do now is go to Filter, Other, High Pass, and select a reasonably low radius, and then put that onto uh, Feathered Byte. So that'll then um, sharpen up our image. So another quick tip uh, when using this action, if you want the effect to shoot out in multiple directions, say if I wanted to go down then up, what I would do is firstly um, get the down direction looking good and I would then flatten our image like that. So now we've just got um, just the one layer. And then what you can do in there is then just run through the process again of uh, brushing on where you want to um, break apart your photo. You no, know, just like that. And then I'll go into my action and I will then select up. So a quick example of this is uh, I ran the right hand side action on this guy and then I flattened the image and then I just brushed down the side here like that and ran the left hand side action and got that. Uh, you can also, you can do that in all four directions if you want. So. Uh, just experiment and have fun um, and if you've got any questions or you have any issues with the action just email me and I'll try to sort it out. Okay, thanks.